could Arizona be in trouble? Yes, but not in the way that I saw suggested. So I was perusing the interwebs and came across a piece that posed the question as to whether Noah Fafita and Tetaroa McMillan would leave Arizona. Now, if you are talking about a former Pac-12 school with stars at a non-traditional power, I was just talking about one of those. His name is Damian Martinez. He's going to be officially in the transfer portal when it opens on Tuesday. So, has it happened before? Yes. Do I think Noah Fafita and Tetaroa McMillan would leave Arizona? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Here's why. McMillan and Fafita have not just branded themselves as the faces of Arizona football as Jed Fish departed to take the Washington coaching job. They, they have sunk their teeth in completely in, in the idea that Arizona can be a place where you went and we're going to do what others think we can't. Now, I, I think Arizona, because of the portal departures that they've already had and could continue to have, it'll get tougher. It, it's just going to be hard. I don't think Arizona's a playoff team in 2024. If Jed Fish stays, this is the you know irony or just context of whatever you want to call it of the Jed Fish move from Arizona up to Washington in the short term, it is, it is the worst move for him as a head coach. In the long term, it's probably better. But there is no question, absolutely no question, that had he stayed at Arizona and kept everybody around, that team would have been better than what Washington would have been if they'd hired, I don't know, Brent Brennan, for instance, or Lance Leipold from Kansas, or whoever they would have gotten had Fish turned them down in 2024. That Arizona team was going to be stacked. But still, you have these foundational pieces. And I look at Fafita and McMillan, who were just sensational last year. Fafita was the offensive freshman of the year. McMillan had over 1,400 yards receiving. These guys are embodying Arizona football. But, you know, they, they've made public posts and they've, uh, I think they've got their own podcast or they've been on a podcast talking about, you know, Jed Fish leaving and everything like that. I think that if they'd wanted to leave, they would have done it already. What, what, what calculus has changed for them? Because when you think about other starters who are going to enter the transfer portal or current projected starters who, who are going to enter the transfer portal when it opens, th those guys are not so foundational, at least that's my suspicion, that they have no possibility of being taken over or losing playing time. Noah Fafita is QB1, and wide receiver one is T-back. That's unquestionable. But if they'd wanted to leave, the opportunity to go with Jed Fish to Washington was there. Because Will Rogers had committed to Kalen DeBoer and company when, when DeBoer was still up there. DeBoer leaves and Rogers, you know, backs off, but then recommits, of course, once Fish got there. If Jed Fish had been bringing in Noah Fafita, Will Rogers would have hit the portal, found a home somewhere else. There is no doubt in my mind that Jed Fish, of course, asked T-Mac and Fafita to go. They said no. Why did they say no? What, what changed that would make them alter their viewpoint on Arizona is the best place for us to be? And this is, this is the spot where we want to play college football in 2024 and try and boost our NFL draft stock. What changed between now and then? Did Washington's NIL collective get a, a massive influx of dollars to get those guys? Because they could go up there and start. I, I, I'd start Noah Fafita over Will Rogers, and T-Mac would be their number one receiver, along with Jeremiah Hunter, a transfer from Cal, who's a really nice player on offense. And if that's your number two, you got something there. And if you had an offense that looked something like Noah Fafita with T-Mac and Jeremiah Hunter and Jonah Coleman in the backfield, you got something. <laughs> you got a team that, I don't know if you're a conference contender across the board, but certainly you got a chance to go over that seven and a half win total, according to our friends at FanDuel. But I don't think that for those guys, enough can change. If they had wanted to chase NIL dollars, I would bet my bottom dollar that they were available already.
that they had offers, that they had interest, that they had intrigue for bigger programs that have bigger NIL collectives than what Arizona has been able to put together in Tucson, that have bigger brands, that play in a bigger conference. And yeah, Damian Martinez did a flip-flop there. But Martinez is also playing a Mountain West schedule this year. Seven games against the Mountain West for Oregon State. Arizona doesn't have that problem. Arizona's in the Big 12. Arizona's got a pretty tough schedule. <laughs> they've got a pretty tough schedule. And they've lost a bunch of key starters. It's why their win total eight and a half, I'd go under right there. I, I think they're seven and five, eight and four sort of team. I, I think nine and three is probably their ceiling, but I think they'd go six and six before they'd go nine and three. I don't think it's going to be easy in year one for Brent Brennan and company as they go to the Big 12. So I, I just read that question and, and asked myself, why why would why would they leave now what what could possibly change someone else had to be interested there were rumors and then they got shot down and everything that you know Kalen DeBoer in Alabama were interested in going after Noah Fafita that there were other school and look that 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 stuff had questionable validity at, at times so make make of it what you will but I have an, an, an impossibly hard time believing that those two playing at Arizona when Jed Fish left, you don't think anybody called them? You don't think anybody was interested? Of course they were. Of course they were. I think they want to be Arizona guys, and I don't think they will go anywhere. The same cannot be said for Bill Norton, though, the defensive tackle. He was a nose guard a year ago. Good football player. Big dude, right? Power four, nose tackle. You're going to be a big dude. So Bill Norton announced that he's going into the transfer portal, and that's kind of where the questions for, for Arizona came into play, or how they, I think, kind of got started as well. They had a backup offensive tackle, and then, and then Bill Norton go into the portal. Are there going to be more departures? Could be. Could be. I don't think Fafita and McMillan are going to be two of them. And if you keep those guys around, I think they can recruit others, and Arizona could survive the transfer portal storm here. But... There are two teams to watch for Bill Norton, a defensive tackle, who, again, plug-and-play sort of starter. Number one, Washington. Jed Fish connection. And does Washington's roster have defensive tackle spots available for you know starting caliber, all-conference caliber guy? Yeah, yeah, they, they, they do. They, they've got room for starting caliber guys at the power level at most spots. Mo, 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 most spots. <laughs> That's just the reality when Washington lost 21 to 22 starters from last year's national championship team. And, and they've brought in quite a few, right? Guys like Prysock at, at corner or Jonah Coleman at running back, Jeremiah Hunter at receiver, Will Rogers at quarterback. They're cobbling together a pretty solid team. But at a position like interior defensive lineman, yeah, yeah, you could watch for that. Here's the other one I'd watch for. And I don't know that contact has been made or interest is there i just know that norton's in the portal and auburn's looking for defensive linemen hugh freeze talked about that openly that they, they feel like going into the spring transfer portal window they want to add defensive linemen well there's a defensive lineman for you and if you're looking at the big 12 and saying nah this isn't good enough for me you probably feel like you have an offer or the ability to get an offer from a big 10 or sec school so I'd watch for that particular move. But as for Fafita and McMillan, I think those guys are both 10 toes down. Appreciate everyone listening. I'll see you next time. And until then, hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.